Hello and welcome to Stockton Junction. This is the uh, the barn conversion that I'm doing. Uh, I mentioned in my previous video. Um, as you can see there, this is a model railway scenery open sided barn, uh, which I wanted for my farmyard, but I would prefer to have a non open barn. So I thought I'd start converting it. So first job to do is to make the framework for the barn as per the instructions which is open legs like this all this top frame like so but then what I've started to do next is using plasti struct or whatever it's called uh, H beams I girder beams I have uh, started with putting three in the back to strengthen the back end up and then two rows along the side there which really strengthened the whole building up really well so basically all I've done I've left this side so that you can see the process cut up a load of beams to the approximate size I just cut them within a millimetre longer so that I can trim them if need be because cutting this plastic doesn't always give a dead straight edge unless you've got a decent tool for it. Um, to sh right. no, you can't really see it on the video but some of them have got slight beveled edges where the knife has gone slightly off. So I cut them a bit longer just so that I can trim them to fit. But as you can see the legs here I don't know, well, you might not be able to see. They sort of move about a bit. So the whole good thing about doing this is it strengthens this section and makes it rigid so it won't move. The only thing I will say is if you are going to have to go at doing something along these lines, make sure you do do it on a flat board so that when you put these in, the legs stay straight. Because if you obviously did it just on its side like so you might end up that one was slightly out like that and it might start making the structure less uh, straight but anyway that's the first stage of what I'm doing I've started to give it a silver coat of paint obviously I'm not going to bother about these top edges because they're going to be covered by the roof I'm not bothered about the outside edges because they're going to be covered as well what I'm more interested in is the inside. Obviously, I haven't done those edges on the left because I've still yet to glue the uh, struts in place on there. One thing I will say about glue, um, for a job like this, I use super glue like that with a little nozzle applicator. Brilliant. Um, obviously, because it's plastic. And what I say is, I buy these, pack of three, Poundland. Absolutely brilliant. Quite good glue. One thing I've noticed, if you're not using the nozzle tip adapter there, the glue can dry out quite easily if you leave the lid off and these little lids that clip on there aren't, aren't great. But I've noticed that with this nozzle adapter, I can just leave it laying around like that for hours, days. And for some reason, the glue inside doesn't dry up. Um, sometimes you have to just trim a, like, a small edge off here, but it... It's brilliant so the next stage that I will be doing with this um, I've started to build the ends and roof structure which I am going to keep off of this building um, I'll also will build the little gutter along there but the one thing I am going to change um, it gives you on a template here and some wire in the kit nothing wrong with that brilliant great idea but i had to ha have to have had to laying around some of these drain pipes from uh i think it was a wheels kit um of drain pipes and gutterings the gutterings are too short i could just uh, use a second one and do it like that but to be honest I'm quite happy with the gutterings that are printed that are on there and I'll just use the drain pipe down 
downpipes from there instead of messing around with the wire which i'll probably find i'll put that in my bits box and i'll have another use for that at a later date might make some good posts or something for signage etc so the next stage obviously is going to be i've got to finish these gluing these into place which i won't show you i think that's pretty self-explanatory glue the roof and the end panels on and then the next job will be to start putting the sides and the back on the building now what i've chosen to use is some plastic card corrugated sheeting and i got it from this company here jtt uh, i've not used them before and you get two sheets in a pack quite large just about, just under a4 they're a bit narrower than a4 but about the right width but obviously i need it that way problem is it's just slightly too short so what i shall do is trim it level to halfway across this beam put in a whole section from there to there and then just finish another section off there obviously it's wide enough for the back um but what we need to do obviously is you would have one of these roof sections on there like that and then i'll have a section like so on there as well which i will do a spray paint in i think just a primer gray from the halfords primers they're really pretty good grays and then i'll weather it up it will then be a slightly different tone to the top roof sections which is good i'm actually almost considering changing this part and having that whole piece on the end there that whole end piece with this sheeting but i think that the two tone and there to there will be quite good if it will be a slightly lighter as well a slightly different gray but i'll weather it really well um i'm considering doing a process that i've seen before where you mark off and make it look like smaller corrugated sheets I could do that or I could leave it as larger or I could cut them instead of making a whole width I could cut them in sections to glue down and then weather them so that it looks like this like five sections and then I could do the back in maybe two or three sections might might look better <clears throat> I haven't quite decided on that but I'll uh obviously show you some progress on that as uh, it comes on and when I've decided how I'm going to do this because I have seen a way of doing the sheeting where you use a mask and you do weathering like in a on the edge of the ma mask you make a, a square with an L, L shape something a bit like if you imagine like that you put it on the sheet and then mask around, move it along, mask, do the edges. And um, it starts to make it look like smaller sheeting. Um, obviously, I want to make it weathered, maybe a little bit of rust on it. I don't know yet. So the other thing I will need to do is the roof sections. You probably, I don't know if you can just, you probably can't see on here. All right, there you go. It's, they're a little bit shiny. So when these are finished and I've uh, put the undersides on as well and they're a bit more rigid, once I've stuck it down on the building, I'm going to use um, a matte, matte coat, which will be something along that line there. This stuff is really good. You do need to mix it very well because it's very watery. And if you don't mix it up properly... And I mean really, really properly so that it's 100% mixed. It doesn't always give a matte finish and it will give a bit of gloss finish. So you do need to mix these very well. And the good thing about these is once you put these on, it's good for weathering powders. So I could add, I know there's a lot of weathering on here, but I could add a little bit of greens or a bit of tiny bit of rust here, patches here and there, that sort of thing, just to emphasize it a little bit more it also 
matte it down, which is great. So take the shine off of the building. So that's stage one at the moment. I will uh, do another video shortly as I progress with this. Maybe once I get the roof and that on in place and decide how I'm going to go pro progress with the uh, sheeting. Um, just a little quick point. You get two sheets in this pack. It is good. Um, they're 0.5 mil thick, so they're not too thick for what I need. They're really ideal. And the quality of this plastic is decent. It's, you know, it's strong. It's not too rubbish. So, anyway, I hope that's of uh, use to some people. Um, obviously, this scale, scene, scale model scenery kit is very good. It's a bit, tr a bit tricky to build because you've got to join all of these into three parts. And, and before you put them together but it's not hard not hard at all it's just time consuming and fiddly but it pretty makes it does make a pretty good rigid structure for this roofing um the other thing i was going to mention is it's actually designed to be a wooden frame barn but um after looking at a lot of pictures of this sort of style of open barn i wanted uh to make it um more metal looking obviously i'm going to weather all this down and wash wash it so it won't be so shiny but the reason i say it'd be it would have been wood is because of the way these little bits are in there they look more like wood how wooden beams would be and yes it might have wooden beams and metal legs but because of the way i'm designing the uh, the H beams on the sides. I wanted to make the legs look metal as well. I mean, obviously, you're not really going to see the roof when it's in place, the inside of the roof, not unless you're looking really down from a strange angle. So it doesn't really matter too much. Anyway, I hope you have uh, find this useful and I'll bring you another video as I progress further. Thank you very much.